G'day folks, John again in Thailand, it's uh, 6.40 in the morning and cloudy, I just checked the rain gauge which is, uh, we've got 3 millimetres, it's sort of between two lines there, I'd call it 3, maybe 3.5, three uh, yeah I've been pruning trees up here and uh, the guy that does some work for us, he's uh, grown corn, uh, you know, like it's a contra type thing. He gets to use the land that we're not using, and um, then he he gets to do jobs for us that we really don't want to do. Um, yeah, hilly country. I'm not really happy about working up here. I do, but you know, like with a backpack sprayer on. You know, going around killing weeds or, you know, spraying trees for insects. Not my scene. <laughs> but anyway, down near the dam, he's got all his corn down there. I'm not sure if that's past that point over there. I'm not sure past that one tree whether that's his corn over there. I think it is. Uh, my brother-in-law's pretty cool with using the land up here too for one thing and another. There's one of the trees I've been pruning. There's lots of them. <laughs> um, I haven't started on the other side yet. The trees along there. They only come to this this point here. Uh, basically, if you, if you sort of go down there, there's just a couple of trees. But the, the corn's sort of like, because the rainy season was late, the corn's really... Well, it's interesting for one thing, and uh, it's been, you know, like late coming, but it's here now and it's growing. Uh, this is a young one. It's got the male seeds up here. They're monosexual. And down here, it's got the, the female, which will become your corn cob. Uh, only one on that one. Some have two. Uh, maybe there's some over here that are a bit more developed. Uh, there's only one on that one, one on that one, one on that one, two. There's one with two. Some of the others that have only got one at the moment may may end up with two. But being monosexual, it self-fertilises, so the, the when the seeds come off, you know, like they get on this furry stuff here, which is on the cob, which uh, that, that goes after a while. Then somehow, I'm not an expert on it, but somehow um, it all happens and the cob develops, which is pretty cool. There's another one, he's not too good looking. I think the bugs have been eating him, but that's not our corn. Uh, it's all mixed in amongst the, the mango trees. Uh, I've got plans to use some of this land next year because he's not going to work for us next year I don't know why but I've got a plan um, from where the mango trees end down there we're either going to and it goes along here and down the hill which is pretty steep there we're going to plant uh, neem trees or possibly Polonia elangata trees uh We've still got to do some more research on it and see which one's going to be the happiest on a hill. Um, it's not always not always easy to know, but for long term, like let's face it, I mean I'm 66 now, and you know if we've got if we've got trees which can produce income, uh, I'm happy with that as long as I don't have to do too much work when I'm 76. Uh, so yeah, that's, that length extends right down there. We can get quite a number of trees on this this area here. Uh, plus, over there between the two trees is more land, but that's sort of like not quite ours. <laughs> um, yeah, won't go into it. It's a bit complicated. And on the other side, there's uh, more trees here. Uh, which is where I started and there's some down there but there's more land down oh it's a bit hard to see down over there I don't know if that's my brother-in-law or not down there with the tractor 
that's his corn way down the bottom. Yeah, so he's got corn down there. We're putting a dam in oh, where that tree is there. Uh, putting a dam in just this side of it. So if we grow polonia trees down there, it'll be, you know, they can be watered during the summer for the first two or three years. Gets hot here and dry in a dry season, which is summer. Uh, yeah, so I've been pruning the, the mango trees, which didn't really get pruned last year when they should have been. They did produce some fruit on some trees, but, uh, you know, like, they needed pruning, and it's a big job. I'm doing it on my own at the moment because the wife's got to look after our, or her grandson. Uh, yeah. So anything below the knee basically goes... And anything that's not growing in a complementary fashion, I'll put it that way, um, that has to go as well. So if the tree's growing branches into the tree, like going that way through there, they become a problem later on, so we don't we don't keep those. This one's a I think it's gonna be okay. There's enough distance between those two stems there so that it won't rub. Because if it rubs, then the wood underneath becomes exposed and bugs can enter the tree and cause problems. We've got that down at the other place on uh, the number one orchard. He's got a fairly solid stake pulling on him, but he can only pull so much. And hopefully we can get him to grow a little bit straighter. We'll put another stake in maybe later in the year, around December and uh, maybe put a strap around him instead of that string. That string's not really super good. Uh, yeah, so I've done down to this row in that direction, and I've done <laughs> diagonally from that tree just there, across there and down there, which is probably 150 trees there. Plus I've pruned... Um, here, just the one row down to the bottom where our driveway meets the track, the Arnie's place. It's all family around here. Um, and I've done the two rows that go along down the bottom there, which aren't very big. But it was hot as hell the other day when the sun was out and I was here and I'd already done some work and up, up the top and some work over there. And then I thought I'll go and work in the shade, which was a good idea because it was a lot cooler. Yeah, so that's it for today. I mean, it's all, I guess you could say, pretty average to me. Uh, maybe it's exciting for some of my viewers. <laughs> anyway, you people have a good day and I'll catch up with you again. Bye now.